You gotta know a day. Special edition. Today, we're going to take a special request and we're going to talk about Vesper theory. Uh, Vesper stands for valent shell electron pair repulsion. Essentially, you can think of this as these molecules have negatively charged balloons. And because they're all negatively charged, they want to get as far away from each other as they possibly can. They, they, they're they repelled um, because of that negative electrons. So something that we need to take into account is something called lone pairs. Lone pairs on these uh, molecules you can see in blue here, they're electrons that are together in the charged cloud. Um, they're not bonded to another atom, so they actually don't count towards the named shape of it. Um, but really they help you see how um, when you have a number of charged clouds, it leads to the same shape. It's just sometimes uh, it doesn't count because it's not actually attached to atoms. And I'm going to go through some common molecules that have each of these shapes. So simplest two charged clouds is CO2 carbon dioxide. It's linear. Formaldehyde, which you can see here, uh, carbon bonded to two H's and an uh, double bonded to an O, uh, is trigonal planar. It's on a, a plane, three together on one plane. And then the same shape, but you have these lone pairs here, that's bent because only these three count um, because of this lone pair. So it's sulfur dioxide is an example of that. Uh, CH4 or methane is tetrahedral. You can see again if there's a balloon here, balloon here, balloon here, balloon here. This is a 3D shape. They're all trying to repel each other. Uh, we get this tetrahedral shape because there are four atoms. Now if we've got a lone pair like an ammonia, NH3, um, we still have the same shape but this one won't count towards the name shape, trigonal pyramidal. It's not planar because they're being pushed down by this one up here, uh, but we see this these three trigonal, but it's a pyramid, so it's pyramidal. And then water uh, is bent. Water, this oxygen molecule, has two lone pairs, um, and as such, uh, they're going to push it, and you're going to see oxygen bonded to H like this, so you get a bent molecule. Um, and these are all nice and, and fine and dandy um, because they all, for the most part, uh, obey the octet rule where they want eight valence electrons. The next page, that throw gets thrown out the window. We get hypervalent molecules, which do not obey the octet rule, but they have some interesting shapes that you might hear about, uh, and some of them have interesting properties. Uh, so phosphorus pentachloride, uh, PCl5, is trigonal bipyramidal. Uh, so it's got this three in the middle, but they form essentially uh, two pyramids, one right on top of each other. That's the bi. Um, sulfur tetrafluoride has something called a seesaw shape, uh, which is real interesting. If you think of this, um, you know, uh, on its side with the lone pair up top, it's a seesaw. Uh, and that's uh, sulfur tetrafluoride SF4. Uh, chlorine trifluoride. Um, it's got the chlorine in the middle, fluorides on uh, the edges, and these lone pairs, uh, which make it a T shape. Um, uh, you've got linear, just like carbon dioxide, uh, which comes, which tri, -i -tri -iodide, um, uh, exists as, and it's really. It's only linear because you've got a whole bunch of lone pairs here. And again, those are five charged clouds. Again, same shape, it's just sometimes they count, sometimes they don't um, because of the uh, lone pairs. Octahedral, uh, sulfur hexafluoride uh, is octahedral. You can see it's sulfur with its six fluorides attached to it. It's an interesting molecule. Actually, I don't recommend it, but people that have taken it, inhaled it, uh, it will lower your voice like the opposite of what helium does. Um, uh, octahedral, uh, it's actually kind of like trigonal bipyramidal, uh, except there, there's four in the same plane, and then you have one above, one below, so you kind of have four or like two uh, full pyramids on top of one another. 
square pyramidal is where we've got a lone pair down here. So it doesn't count, uh, but it makes a nice pyramid shape. And antimony pentachloride uh, uh, obeys this. And then um, xenon tetrafluoride, if you remember xenon, it's a Nobel gas. It shouldn't bond with other things. Well, guess what? It does. It was the first binary compound, um, uh, meaning two different things uh, bonded together with a noble gas. Um, uh, and you can see it's a square plane. Again, we've got a lone pair up here, a lone pair down here, and four on a nice plane. Xenon, tetrafluoride. Those are the molecular geometries that you are likely to see. Uh, this is a good list to memorize um, because uh, they could show up. And that is, it's not a full explanation, but it's a quick uh, and dirty explanation of the types of geometries you might see with Vesper theory.